Prost. No problem. Is that on? Is that working? One, two, three, four. Don't want to shout because it might. Hey! Is it? Oh, my ears. Oh! Um, yeah, basically, we're just doing a little documentary. Right. About you, basically, because you have such a great reputation in the media and stuff like that. And um, we're just going to ask some pretty basic questions about No you. problem. And, like, we're like, really interested also about your family. And how you oh, hang on a minute. There's! Pillock. See what you want. Open that door for me, kid. Hello! Sorry, mate, I need a sugar in coffee. I don't in tea, but I do in coffee. <laughs> Good try. You'll have two shovels around your head. <laughs> Tell you what. Hello. What a complete. I'll make your, I'll really try, I'll try, I'll try. Yeah. Cheers, Sonny. <laughs> anyway, yeah. as you can see, I'm having a mad day. Yeah, definitely. I mean, basically, just also really interested about your family like having deaf children as well and how that right. in your life. Right. Okie dokie. If you fire away, yeah. I shall tidy my desk. Do you know what I can't stand before we start? I cannot stand having an untidy desk. I um, hate it. People keep coming in here, putting stuff down. Does my bounce in? Life should be in order. Yeah, definitely. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Don't need them. Don't need that. And I'll tell you what. There goes you. It does me. Is there anything that really bugs you? Because that really bugs me. Yeah, don't blame you. Complete <laughs> lunatics down there, aren't they? Yeah, basically, um, would you tell us a bit about yourself? Or? Yes. How, you got into this? How I got into this was um, completely by accident. And if you believe that, you're a liar. <laughs> and I'm a liar. I said when I was nine and ten to my parents and to everybody, I'm going to be a professional footballer, I'm going to be a manager. That's what I said. And um, I was only knee eye to a grasshopper. And I wanted to be the player first. And then, because I love football that much, it made me feel um, worthy, gave me self esteem, it gave me a place in a group of people, it taught me about ups and downs of life. And I just, that's what I'm going to do. And everybody thought I was mad. Um, what about my schoolwork? I mean, basically, I like art and I like PE, and that was it, really. I'd have been absolutely hopeless. Reading and writing was always a bit of a struggle for me. Uh, my brother used to read to me when I was young. He's nine years older than me, so I had it all easy. Why read when your brother's reading to you? It doesn't make sense, does it? I had some great books, and I just sat there. So, you know, all of these things, it all added up, and, and I just knew what I wanted to do. So I was very, very focused right from day one, and all I did was bring all the things I needed, and I wasn't going to accept not being good enough. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. I wasn't going to accept it. So I was very, very fortunate. And I made it happen. Yeah, that's really interesting. No, it is. That's great. And how, how do you think... So this attitude that you've obviously really driven and determined, checking that, is primarily because you wanted to be a footballer and that, does that transfer into everything else you do in your life? Or? Um, yeah, you have to ask other people about that. But, you know, I... I never, I've always hated losing, absolutely despised it, and I don't run away from it. I accept the fact that losing is a possibility, but I will not, I will keep kicking and screaming, and, and when I was a kid, I'd throw my draft board up in the air, and then my dad wouldn't play with me. I got all these frustrations and all sorts of stuff. And, um, so I, I just think your character does shine through, and and, and I managed to use me in what I want to do. And some people's life, they have to suppress who they are to go to work and then come back and they got other hobbies. And But I made my hobby my job. So I'm a very, very happy person. It's not what it's cracked up to be. You're constantly worried. You have to disappoint people. Um, you have to break some of their hearts by telling them they're not good enough at a certain age. But you have to try and do it with the right reasons, you know, so it wouldn't suit everybody, but it suited me. And I'm trying to live my life as one person. And for this game, you know, 
suits me with that. So everything else, I'm exactly the same as I am. What you see is what you get, you over. Um, you don't have to like it, but I can't change. I can't change for anything. So if you said something in a minute that I didn't like, I'd have to say, oh, I'm not, I don't like that. Because I've always been that way, you know, and at least hopefully if you work with me or work for me, you know where you stand. I like my children to know where they stand and I like my people who work for me to know where they stand. Certain st levels and standards I have to stick to, otherwise, what's the point? Yeah. Can I just move your microphone slightly? Yeah. Is it? it down a bit or yeah got it garden center yesterday mate getting so a bit, getting a bit chilly <laughs> go on you mentioned your deaf children how has that impacted a lot you must have been massively yeah. massively you know when you're a parent and you find out there's something missing or not wrong or different with your children it's like the end of the world you know you take it personally you think oh my god is it me or what but you know to be fair it's enhanced our lives massively massively you know because you realize um it's not so easy for certain people you don't take things for granted so much as you do and you you have to actually stop and think about other people and i think there's a lot of people in the world who should whoa wait a minute stop and think about other people before they get so carried away with their own importance in supermarkets and what have you. Get out of the way and my daughters can't hear them. Oh, excuse me! And they can't hear them. And it's like they're the most important person in the world. No, excuse me, my daughter's deaf, so you know, can you move? You know, how dare you? And then they go, oh, 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 yeah, well, just think a bit more, will you? So, you know, obviously having to learn a new language to get unlock them, to get to them. You know, I've bumbled my way through, whereas my wife's fantastic, you know, so. We've had to change it, it changes everything. But, you know, I'm delighted it's happened. The doors are absolutely perfect. They're perfect the way they are. That's the way they're meant to be. And um, they're doing very, very well. So it's enhanced our lives. They are, yeah. They're their dad fans, so wherever I go, they, you know, but they love, they love it here. They love it. Yeah. Being a football manager as well as saying having to deal with They don't like they don't like the fact that I'm no? a football manager. No. No, not really. It makes them feel embarrassed. Really? Right, fair enough. <laughs> Obviously in the in the in the deaf school the other week there was I did something for testicular cancer. I had a photo with a ball stood in front of me, I had nothing else on. <laughs> and they thought I was a prostitute. Some of the people in the school thought I was a prostitute. So they've come in, oh, your dad's a prostitute, saw him with no clothes on in the paper. And it was like, no, no, he's... And they don't, you know, some of them don't understand. So they, And there's been a lot of stick they've had at times. Your dad's rubbish and he's this and he's that. And why should he leave? Why don't he leave our club and all that? You know, you get, they get all sorts of it. And they, they'd rather just get on with who they are than have thrust in their face who I am all the time. But, you know, I can't help that, can I? So do you reckon having deaf kids helps put things into perspective, especially dealing with... Um, I mean, any kids does, but you know, this has definitely enhanced our awareness. My wife Kim and I, it's definitely and made me think about and appreciate things a lot more. When you realise I can, you're talking to me and it's easy. Whereas, and how I feel when I meet new people, I'm always comfortable. Hello, how are you? Because I've got a great skill in communicating. I think. Whereas my daughters, if they met you, they'd be really shy and. And you know, keeping themselves to themselves, and you know, I, I just think we're meant to be with people. Human beings are meant to be with other human beings, so uh, it's very difficult when you're a little bit different. So at all times, I'm uh, much more aware than I used to be, because I was very tunnel visioned, very f self-centered, very focused on where I was going and what I wanted to do, and I don't think I was a very nice person. I thought I was, but I don't think I was a very nice person to be around, to be honest. Did the, I know you did the stress test, which is quite an interesting bit to you. Did, did that change your life? Would that, was that Mass happen? Yeah, yeah, huge, huge. Yeah, I don't very often get angry now. You did before? I used to very, very much. And uh, I wasn't proud of it. 
because if you do get angry, you lose control of what you say and what you do, and you should always be very, very aware. You should own what you say and own what you do all the time, take responsibility. I think that's absolutely vital, but I'm now using that in my management. So hopefully I've learned from it, but I'm a much better person and parent right now. That's not coming from me, that's coming from them. Um, you also were really well known for your pre and post match comments, obviously in the media and quoting and stuff. Mm. Do you think sometimes that that gets priority, whereas your managerial ability would uh, you prefer them to focus on other things? Or how do you feel about that? Um, that's a brilliant question again. Um, none of it really matters. The truth is, none of it really matters. Because you can't change someone's perception of you. Um, and the media perception of people is very, very different to the real person anyway. You know, I'm sure Michael Jackson isn't this complete, real, total weirdo that he shows the rest of the world somewhere along the line. There's probably a really damaged young kid who never had a childhood who's had to do things that he probably didn't want to do himself, you know, so... What everybody thinks of me anyway, I can't change. I can only be me. Um, I do get annoyed sometimes because if they get one word different, it doesn't make sense. Because I know what I say. You know, I don't want people to be, um, for example, I don't want people to be expectant. Because if you're expectant, you just are being the wrong type of person. I'm optimistic. I'm very optimistic. Even if we're free down with 20 minutes to go, I still believe we're going to, you know, there's a big, big difference. And, you know, I was quoted the other day that I was not optimistic. That they forgot that word. They use wishful. And that makes it seem like I'm sat here going, oh, please, this win. I don't ever feel like that. So it's totally wrong. Um, and I did say one, if if I had, they, so I was quoted as saying, if I had long hair, I'd be a rock star. I didn't say that at all. What I said is if my auntie had, testicles, she'd be my uncle. Because if is the biggest word in this world. You know, so I'm only... Now, they obviously couldn't print that one, but it's been twisted to make no sense, i.e. every club you work for has a certain cloth. You cut your cloth accordingly. So Plymouth, I'm not going to be able to buy all these people for two, three, four million. I know that, but out of the, play, out of the players that I've got, the cloth that I've got... I think I can make a very, very nice suit. Not soup. Someone quoted me of saying soup. Because if you actually think about that, that doesn't make sense at all, does it? And the world famous one, I actually meant at the time I was under a bit of pressure, but I talked to my players in those circumstances because I honestly believe women go out there and do the ugly trawling on a night as well. If you're not attached to anyone and you go out on a night, I swear, I swear to you, women do the same thing. Look around, oh, he's nice, I wonder if he wants to dance, and oh, oh, I don't like the ugly one there. I was always the ugly one. And I know blokes do that, so, you know, I've actually used that as a scenario about coffee. And everybody, but I actually talked to my players like that, you know, that was an ugly win, it wasn't the best, you know, I wanted to play better than that. And, and it all makes sense if you actually stop and think about it. I want to win well, it's about a performance, we've got to have a good performance and we get good results. You know, even if you, I'm not happy if we win and we play poorly. I don't like that. I don't think that leads to a continuation of what you do. And to be successful, you have to continue. You have to have habits that are sustainable and you're committed to that get you regular, regular success. And I believe every single person in every walk of life who's successful has these habits. They face the things they've done wrong. They don't blame other people. They take responsibility for that. They look at it and they do it different next time because they admit they're wrong. And they're not like, oh, how unlucky was I? How many people, oh, I, uh, you know, how unlucky was I? I uh. They have as much bad luck as anybody else, yet they don't put up with it. They won't accept it. They get on with it. They look at it, see it for what it is and change it. So, you know, that's all I think.
Hang on a minute, I'm sorry about it. Hello? Hello? Who is it, mate? Ed, all right, mate. Yeah, how are you? Listen, I'm just doing an interview, mate. Can you give me a call a bit later on? Um, yeah, about five o'clock would be brilliant, mate. Top man. Thanks, Ed. Bye. Sorry about that. No, that's not right, mate. That's so unprofessional. That is a joke. Right. You got voted uh, 15th funniest Londoner. Well, that's great if I'm a comedian, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> even, from, even though you're from Bristol. How'd you feel about that? Um, it's great if I was wanting yeah. to be a comedian. Yeah. You know, but when you're a football manager and you're supposed to be this, you know, someone that someone would trust with your team, I'm not sure if that's flattering or what, but to be fair, I couldn't give a monkeys. You know, I find life amusing and I try and say things that I think are different. Um, to motivate young players these days and in the last 10 years how you say it now compared to how you had to say it years ago um, it's totally different the discipline people had 10 years ago is much was much more regimented than, than now you've got to have to win these kids over before they'll do what you want so you've got to change all the time so um, um, my dad always said he had some great sayings no one ever kicks a dead dog because what's the point? So if people, I'm on people's tongues, that means I've still got something. So if they find me funny, great. If they want to laugh, I don't care because I can laugh at myself anyway. And that's the biggest thing. I don't take myself too seriously. I've got a bald head, big or bandy legs. What more can I do? You know, I've had to learn to accept myself, warts and all. And that was what I was taught with the anger management. And, you know, that's it. That's what it's all about. So if they want to say I'm funny, good luck one. I think Ricky Gervais is funny. I think he won it. <laughs> now he is funny. I'm not paid to be funny, am I? But there we go. Uh, definitely. Definitely. Do you do a lot of campaigning for uh, the death cause? Yeah, we had a choice. We had a choice years ago. Um, sometimes it's... Uh, if you're in the public eye... If you're actually an entertainment person, I was always a player, um, people got to know about it. So we had a choice, my wife and I, do we publicise it and say, yes, we embrace this we're, and hopefully raise awareness. That's what we chose to do all those years ago. So we do as much as we possibly can. Um, we've run a marathon for ear and dogs for deaf people. And we raised about four or 5,000, I think it was. Um, and we do as much as we possibly can. My kids have got fed up with it, but, you know, part of the, the show that I wanted to change was it can be really frustrating um, disciplining deaf children because if they do that and they won't look at you you can't get through to them with my boy I would raise my voice I only had to raise it to a certain level he knew what I said but with deaf children you've got to ignore it and you've got to walk away and leave them still doing what they're doing wrong it's amazing but you know so I found it really frustrating um but I think it's really important that people should know that. And I've found it educational and, and self-healing by doing those things. And um, I'm glad, how, even if one person knows a bit more about what it's like to be deaf, because I've had some deaf children then, fantastic. I still believe that every child in school, in primary school, should be taught some BSL, British Sign Language. I think you can fingerspell. And that would make the world, because as a young kid, you pick it up. It's a, more natural than you're hearing um, your spoken word. And if everybody was taught that, I think there'd be an awful lot. No way should deaf people struggle that much. But um, that's just the way it is, I'm afraid. That's the, the way of life. And we learn all sorts of other languages, us English. We're not very good at them, are we? We're a bit lazy, really. We expect everyone else to talk our language, but... Young kids pick up sign language because it's so visual and such such a natural language that they pick it up like that. Yeah. My niece is... It's funny how things happen. My niece is now a, a fully qualified interpreter because she found it so easy. And she was good at languages anyway, so the older people in our family have struggled a bit, but our whole family has learned to sign, everybody. Some parents don't learn to sign. My advice to everybody is learn to sign. 
because you know your children's hearing um, is deficient, is not as it should be or could be, and you know they can see, so you should teach them a visual language. And then from that one, they will learn English. Otherwise, what are you teaching them? That is my own personal experience of it, and you should do it. And I know it's scary if you're a hearing person. There's also the other way around. A lot of deaf people have hearing children, so they need to get help as well. But, um, you know, as I say, if, if you know they can see, teach them a visual language, and it unlocks the door. I've seen it all. Identical twins, we didn't know were deaf. My young one, Harriet, we knew she was deaf. We signed to her and she's had no frustrations that the other two have had. She's age appropriate at every level because we were already signing and it's really unusual. Normally with the hearing loss that you lose other information so you're naturally behind, particularly in a, in a language you can't hear. But my daughter isn't. So I'm very proud of that. But she, I, she could have a conversation with us of five or six words by the time she was just toddling. I asked her to go and get my white training shoe from my bedroom. I had loads of different ones, loads. Come back. You try asking a, a 10 month old child to go and do that in English. She won't have a clue what you're on about. She did it. She brought the right training shoe. I was crying my eyes out, it's fantastic. I didn't sign it as good as that then, mate. <laughs> I had to remember what shoe was and you know all that, but it was fantastic. And so she's just flown through life. She would go up to any here an adult and say, "Oh, you," and sign to him. Oh, yeah. you deaf? Oh no, you're hearing. <laughs> yeah, you're hearing. <laughs> Gone over your head. <laughs> I'm lucky. I know sign language. Do you know what I mean? That's how they. That's how she see it. But it's, she's had none of the frustrations. If I could rewind, and have already learnt sign language before my first two were born it would be heaven sent. They'd have no problems and they had loads of frustrations and they're still paying for it now. But I'm very, very proud of them. And their, their love is horses and when they're on horseback, it's the most beautiful thing to see ever because they feel all their other senses come in and they feel and it's just wonderful. And um, hopefully they found their love like I found my love, which was football, so it's marvelous. Mm. Thank you. And um, do you think not only with uh, deaf, the deaf awareness, do you think football has a large part to play in making people aware of all sorts of yeah. qualities and football? Football players, it's such a popular game. It's on in your face the whole time. If you don't like it, it must be a nightmare. But it's in your face the whole time. It's like a cult thing. Yeah, they should put back. They should give back. Um, and they should be good role models. You won't get everybody a, a good role model. It won't happen. The world ain't like that. But, you know, a lot of them, unfortunately, do do great work. Um, hello. They do do great work. Hello, love. Yeah, I'll be two minutes. I'm just helping these boys out. It's my wife, Kim. Is it? They were talking about, they're asking me a lot of things about our daughters. Yeah. yeah. All right. So... Where was I then? Um, that oh yeah, yeah. It's, you know, a, an awful lot of them do do good things. I think they could do a lot more. I was in sense last last summer where there was something about them going gambling and wasting and losing a lot of money in a in a. Why can't they give it to other people? You know, they wouldn't realise what deaf schools have to go through because they're a minority. What the kids don't get because they're a minority, they could do so much more for it. But if you don't know, you don't do, do so. If I had more time, I'd be campaigning even more, but I haven't got it. Uh, that's, that's brilliant. Have you got one more question or is that uh, it? Hey, All right, how's that? that is, that's brilliant, Fantastic. <laughs> what do I drink? Nothing. I don't want anything from you, my friend. It was a pleasure to help you. No, it's a pleasure to help you. I wish you all the best with it. Will be, uh, and any time, if you let me, I, I wasn't sure you were definitely coming. So, but today's really busy. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. So I do apologise, but. Oh, it's, it's all good.